Hey guys, welcome to another video on our channel. Today, I bring you an incredible story full of mysteries. Let's learn about the story of Asher Wyndham, a man who faced a near-death experience and received a shocking revelation about the future of humanity. You won't want to miss any detail of this fascinating story. Before we start, leave in the comments which city you are watching, and if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, take the opportunity to subscribe now and activate the bell so you don't miss the next videos. Let's do it. My name is Asher Wyndham, and I have a story to tell that has completely changed my life and my view of the world. I was born and raised in Savannah, or Georgia, a city full of history and mystery. Since I was young, I have always been fascinated by the big questions in life, which led me to pursue a career as a philosophy professor. I lived an ordinary life, teaching at the local university, married to my beloved wife Eleanor, and spending my free days lost in books or on long walks through Savannah's wooded parks. I have never been a particularly religious or spiritual man. My faith was in reason and logic, and I believed that everything in life could be explained through science and philosophy. But all that changed in 1977, when I was 40 years old. It was that year that I received the news that would turn my life upside down. I was diagnosed with terminal colon cancer. Suddenly, all the philosophical questions I had debated in class for years took on a new urgency. Death in war, which was once an abstract concept to be discussed in seminars, has become an imminent and frightening reality. The months following the diagnosis were a whirlwind of emotions. I went through painful treatments, watched my body waste away, and felt the weight of mortality like never before. Eleanor was by my side every step of the way, her strength and love sustaining me through my darkest moments. But even with all the support, I could feel my life slowly slipping away. What I didn't know then was that this apparent tragedy would be the portal to an experience that would challenge everything I believed I knew about life, death, and the nature of reality. A journey that would take me beyond the limits of the physical world and make me question everything I thought was true. I'm here today to share this story with you. I am not a spiritual guru, nor have I written books on the subject. I'm just an ordinary man who had an extraordinary experience, an experience that showed me that there is much more to existence than what our eyes can see or our rational mind can comprehend. What I'm about to tell you may seem unbelievable perhaps even impossible to some, but I can assure you that every word is true, at least as I have lived it and remember it. It is the story of my death and my rebirth, of a journey through realms beyond human understanding, and of a return with a new purpose. I ask that you listen with an open mind, even if the things I'm about to share challenge your beliefs or your logic, because what I learned on this journey is that the universe is much more vast, mysterious, and wonderful than we could ever imagine. So let's start from the beginning. From the day my heart stopped beating and my consciousness expanded beyond the limits of my physical body. The day I died and, paradoxically, started to truly live. It was December 26, 1977, a cold, gray day in Savannah. I had been in the hospital for weeks, my body consumed by the relentlessly spreading cancer. The pain was constant, Despite the morphine coursing through my veins, Eleanor was by my side, as always, holding my hand as I struggled to breathe. I remember looking out the window, seeing the bare branches of the trees against the cloudy sky. I thought about how strange it was that this view could be the last thing I would see in this life. Then, suddenly, something changed. The pain that had been tormenting me for months simply disappeared. It was at that moment that I realized something extraordinary was happening. The colors in the room became more intense, more vivid than I had ever seen them. The white of the hospital walls glowed as if it were lit from within. The sounds around me, the beeping of machines, Eleanor's soft murmur, became crystal clear, almost musical. Then, I felt a feeling of lightness, as if my body was losing weight. I looked at my hands and was shocked to see that I could see through them. It was as if I was becoming transparent, dissolving into air. The initial panic was quickly replaced by a deep, inexplicable peace. I knew somehow that I was dying. 
but there was no fear. Just a calm curiosity about what would come next. Suddenly I had the sensation of moving, as if I were being gently pulled upward. I looked down and saw my body on the hospital bed. Eleanor was still holding my hand, silent tears streaming down her face. I wanted to comfort her, tell her that she was okay, that there was nothing to fear. But I couldn't reach her. I continued upward, passing through the ceiling as if it were made of fog. I saw the hospital below me, getting smaller and smaller as I ascended. The city of Savannah stretched out around me, its streets and buildings looking like a miniature map. And then, without warning, I was enveloped in total darkness. But it wasn't a frightening or oppressive darkness. It was like being wrapped in soft, comfortable, and welcoming velvet. There was no sense of time or space, just a deep and complete peace. At that moment, I realized that I was no longer connected to my physical body. I had no form, but I still existed. It was pure consciousness, floating in a void that paradoxically seemed full of infinite potential and possibilities. It was then that I saw the light. At first, it was just a distant dot, like a lonely star in an endless sky. But it quickly grew, becoming brighter and closer. It was not a blinding light or uncomfortable for the eyes. It was soft, welcoming, almost alive. I felt irresistibly drawn to that light. It wasn't a physical movement, but a deep desire to merge with her, to become part of her. As I got closer, the feeling of peace and well-being intensified. It was as if I was returning to a home I never knew I had, being embraced by an unconditional love that transcended anything I had ever experienced on earth. And then, I was inside the light. It enveloped me, permeated me, dissolved the last vestiges of what I thought was my self. In that moment, I was the light, and the light was me. All separation disappeared, and I experienced a unity with all that is that is impossible to describe with words. It was in this state of ecstasy and unity that my journey beyond life truly began. A journey that would take me to encounters with beings of light, to realms of indescribable beauty, and to revelations that would shake the foundations of my understanding of reality. But in that moment, floating in the light, I knew only one thing with absolute certainty. Death, as I had feared it, did not exist. What I was experiencing was not an end, but a new beginning. And what was to come would change everything I thought I knew about life, death, and the purpose of our existence. As I floated in that ocean of light and unconditional love, I began to notice a presence. At first, it was just a subtle sensation, as if someone was watching me with a gentle gaze. But gradually, that presence became more defined, more tangible. Then I saw him, a being of pure light, so bright it should have dimmed my vision, but somehow I could look directly at it without discomfort. Its form was vaguely humanoid but constantly changing, as if it were made of liquid light. He had no discernible face, but I could feel his expression. It was one of pure love, compassion, and a wisdom beyond my understanding. When this being addressed me, it was not with spoken words. It was more like his thoughts flowed directly into my consciousness. Communication was instantaneous and complete, conveying not just ideas but entire emotions and experiences in a single moment. Welcome, Asher, said the being of light. Don't be afraid. You're safe here. I wanted to respond, to ask a thousand questions that were bubbling in my mind. But before I could formulate a single thought, the being continued. I know you have many questions. All will be answered in due time. But first, there is something you need to see. With these words, the environment around us changed. The light that surrounded us turned into a series of moving images. I recognized it immediately. It was my life, playing before my eyes like a movie at high speed. I saw my childhood in Savannah, the hot summers playing with my brothers in our backyard. I saw my school years, the moments of triumph and the disappointments. I saw the day I met Eleanor, our first kiss, our wedding. I watched my teaching career unfold, the countless classes I taught, the students whose lives I touched. But it wasn't just a recap of the events of my life. 
It was much deeper than that. I could feel the impact of each of my actions, not just on myself, but on everyone around me. I saw how an act of kindness I casually performed years ago had a ripple effect, positively influencing the lives of people I didn't even know. At the same time, I saw the times when I was selfish or cruel, and I felt the pain I caused others as if it were my own. There was no external judgment, just a clear and honest understanding of the consequences of my actions. The most surprising thing was that I could feel not only my own feelings and thoughts in each moment, but also those of the people around me. It was as if I could experience my life from every possible angle simultaneously. Throughout this review, the being of light remained by my side, a comforting and loving presence. There was no condemnation in her energy, just understanding and an unconditional love that left me in awe. When my life review ended, I sat in silence for a moment, processing everything I had seen and felt. Finally, I managed to speak. I... I didn't know. I had no idea the impact my actions had. The being of light responded with a wave of understanding and affection. Few realize the true scope of their actions while in physical form. This is one of the most important lessons you can take away from here. Then, with infinite kindness, the being guided me away from the images of my life. Now, he said, there is more for you to see and learn. Your journey is just beginning. And with that, I felt myself once again in motion, being taken into a new realm of experience, with the being of light as my constant guide. What came next would further challenge my understanding of reality and show me truths I could never have imagined. Guided by the being of light, I began a journey through different spiritual realms. It is difficult to describe these places in earthly terms, as they completely transcend our physical reality. There was no sense of time or space as we know it. It was as if each realm was a state of consciousness, a different vibratory frequency. The first kingdom we visited was of indescribable beauty. Imagine the most vibrant colors you've ever seen, then multiply that intensity by a thousand. The air, if I can call it that, felt alive, sparkling with energy and light. Fluid, ethereal shapes danced around us, creating complex, harmonious patterns. In this realm, I met other souls. Some looked familiar, like I knew them from somewhere, even though I couldn't identify them specifically. They all radiated a deep peace and joy. We communicated not through words, but through thoughts and emotions that flowed freely between us. The being of light explained that this was a realm of healing and renewal, where souls came to rest and rejuvenate themselves between physical incarnations. I could feel the love and compassion that permeated every aspect of this place. We were then transported to a very different realm. Here the atmosphere was more sober, almost melancholic. I saw souls that seemed lost, wandering aimlessly. Some seemed confused, others distressed. The being of light informed me that this was a transitional realm, where souls who had difficulty accepting their passage or who were stuck with unfinished business on earth remained temporarily. Although the sight of these suffering souls was disturbing, the being of light assured me that this state was temporary. Every soul here, he explained, is in a process of learning and healing. No suffering is eternal. I watched as other beings of light, similar to my guide, moved among these souls, offering comfort and guidance. It was a powerful reminder that even in the darkest moments, love and compassion are always present. The next kingdom we visited was vastly different. It was a place of intense activity and purpose. Here I saw countless souls engaged in what I can only describe as cosmic work. Some seemed to be planning future incarnations. Others were involved in creating... something. I couldn't understand exactly what, but the sense of purpose and importance was palpable. My guide explained that this was a realm where souls work towards the growth and evolution of not just themselves, but all of existence. Every soul has a role in the grand plan of the universe, he said. Here, they discover and fulfill this role. As we continued our journey, we visited kingdom after kingdom, each with its own unique energy and purpose. I saw places of learning, where the knowledge of ages flowed freely. 
I saw realms of creation, where new ideas and possibilities were constantly born. In each realm, I was struck by the interconnectedness of everything. There was no real separation between one kingdom and another, or between the souls that inhabited them. Everything was part of a greater whole, a cosmic tapestry of existence and experience. Throughout this journey, I felt transformed. My consciousness has expanded to encompass perspectives and understandings I never imagined possible. I began to see my own life, and all of existence, in a completely new way. I realized that the life we live on Earth is just a small part of a much larger journey. Every experience, every challenge, every relationship has a deeper purpose than we can perceive from our limited earthly perspective. Yet even with all this expansion of consciousness, I knew I was only scratching the surface. There was so much more to see, to learn, to experience. And it was then that my guide informed me that there was one more important meeting I needed to have before returning. You are ready, said the being of light, for an encounter that will profoundly change your understanding of your life's purpose and the future that awaits humanity. With these words, I felt myself moving once again, being led towards what I intuited was the culmination of my spiritual journey. What came next would be an encounter that would not only change my life, but give me a mission that I would carry back to the world of the living. As we were transported into this new realm, I felt a palpable shift in the energy around me. The atmosphere was charged with an intensity that I had not yet experienced on my journey. It was as if the air itself, if I can call it that, vibrated with power and purpose. Suddenly, we were enveloped by a light so intense that, for a moment, I thought it might consume me. But instead of feeling overwhelmed, I felt energized, as if every particle of my being was being activated and aligned with a higher frequency. It was then that I saw him. Before me was a presence so majestic, so powerful, that my first reaction was one of absolute awe. It was Archangel Michael. Its form was both defined and fluid, emanating a light that seemed to contain all the colors of the universe. His golden armor reflected this light in ways that defied comprehension, creating patterns of energy that danced in the air around him. Its wings, huge and magnificent, radiated shades of blue, silver and gold that I had never seen before. Each feather seemed to contain entire galaxies, miniature universes pulsating with life and possibility. His face was transcendently beautiful, combining strength and compassion in a way that left me speechless. His eyes, as deep as the cosmos itself, seemed to contain all the wisdom of eternity. When Miguel spoke, it was not with words, but with a voice that resonated through my being, touching every fiber of my existence. Asher, he said, and the sound of my name carried a weight and meaning that I had never felt before. And you were brought here because you have an important role to play in what is to come. I wanted to respond, to ask questions, but I found myself momentarily speechless, in complete amazement at the presence of the archangel. Miguel continued, what you have seen and experienced so far has been just the beginning. There is much more at stake than you can imagine, and humanity is about to face challenges that will test its very existence. With a wave of his hand, the space around us transformed. I saw images of a future that filled me with fear and worry. I saw devastating wars, natural disasters of unimaginable proportions, pandemics that swept entire continents. I saw the very fabric of society crumbling under the weight of greed, fear, and ignorance. The kind, said Miguel, is one of many possible futures for humanity. A path of darkness and destruction that threatens not only the physical world, but the spiritual balance of countless souls. I felt a wave of despair wash over me. How could humanity survive such chaos? How could we avoid such a terrible fate? As if reading my thoughts, Miguel spoke again. But this is not the only path. Humanity has the power to choose a different future, a future of light, love, and spiritual evolution. With another gesture, images of destruction were replaced by visions of hope. I saw people from all nations coming together in peace and mutual understanding. I saw technological advances used to heal the planet and raise the consciousness of humanity. 
I saw a new era of spiritual enlightenment blossoming across the earth. This, Miguel said, is the future we fight for. And this is where you have a role to play. I felt the weight of responsibility fall on me. Did I, a simple philosophy professor from Savannah, have a role in the destiny of humanity? The idea seemed impossible, even absurd. Once again, Miguel responded to my unspoken thoughts. Do not underestimate the power of a single soul dedicated to the light. Every act of love, every word of truth, every moment of compassion creates ripples that spread throughout the universe, affecting realities beyond your understanding. He approached me, and I felt his energy wrap around me like a blanket of light. Your mission, Asher, is to return to the physical world and share what you have learned here. You are to be a beacon of light in times of darkness, a bringer of hope when despair threatens to take over. But how? I finally managed to ask. How can I make a difference in the face of such immense challenges? Miguel smiled, and in that smile I saw all the love in the universe. Through love, Asher, through compassion, understanding, and the courage to speak the truth. Even when it's difficult, every soul you touch, every mind you open to greater possibilities, will be a light lit in the darkness. I felt a wave of determination wash over me. Even though the task seemed impossible, I knew I couldn't refuse. Not after everything he had seen and experienced. I'm ready, I said, surprised by the strength in my own voice. Miguel nodded, his approval sending waves of energy through me. Remember, Asher, you will never be alone on this mission. We, the beings of light, will always be with you guiding and protecting those who choose the path of love and truth. With those words, I felt like my time in this realm was coming to an end. But before leaving, Miguel had one last message for me, a message that I would carry back to the world of the living, a message that would change everything. Archangel Michael's words resonated in my consciousness with a clarity and strength that I had never experienced before. Each syllable seemed to carry the weight of eons, imbued with a knowledge and wisdom that transcended my mortal understanding. Asher, he began, his voice echoing across the dimensions, what I am about to reveal to you is of paramount importance not only to you, but to all of humanity. The future unfolding before us is a carpet woven with the threads of the choices of each soul incarnated on earth. With a majestic gesture of his hand, the space around us transformed once again. This time, I saw the earth as if I were observing it from space. It was breathtakingly beautiful, a blue and green orb floating in the vastness of the cosmos. But as I watched, I noticed shadows forming, darkening parts of the planet. I see her. What you see, Miguel explained, are the consequences of the choices humanity has made over millennia. Greed, selfishness, Lack of compassion and disconnection with nature and the divine have created profound imbalances. The shadows intensified, and I could see events unfolding on the planet's surface. I saw wars breaking out on different continents, conflicts fueled by hatred, fear, and misunderstanding. I saw natural disasters of an unprecedented scale, devastating hurricanes, earthquakes that swallowed entire cities, floods that redrawn the map of the world. These are just the physical symptoms, Miguel continued. The true danger lies in the darkness that threatens to engulf the souls of humanity. The vision changed, and now I could see the auras of people on Earth. Many were shrouded in shadow, their inner lights dimmed by fear, anger, and despair. I saw how this darkness spread from person to person, like a spiritual infection. If this path continues, Miguel said, his voice filled with a deep sadness. Humanity risks losing its connection with the divine. Souls will be trapped in cycles of suffering and ignorance, unable to evolve and fulfill their true selves. Potential I felt a wave of despair wash over me. How could we avoid such a terrible future? How could I, a single person, make a difference in the face of such monumental challenges? But then, as if responding to my unspoken thoughts, Miguel spoke again, 
his voice now filled with hope and determination. But this bleak future is not written in stone, Asher. It is only a possibility, a warning of what could happen if humanity continues on its current course. But there is hope. There is always hope. With another gesture, the view changed once again. Now, I saw points of light shining through the darkness. These were people, ordinary individuals who, through acts of love, compassion, and courage, were changing the world around them. These are the awakened souls, Miguel explained, those who have chosen the path of light, love, and truth. Every act of kindness, every word of encouragement, every moment of compassion creates ripples of light that spread, affecting not only the physical world, but also the spiritual realms. I saw how these waves of light expanded, touching other souls, awakening them to their true divine nature. It was like watching a spiritual dawn, slow but inexorable. Your mission, Asher, Miguel continued, is to join these awakening souls. You are to become a beacon of light in times of darkness. Your experiences here, the knowledge you have gained, are to be shared with the world. I felt the weight of this responsibility, but also a growing determination. I knew I couldn't stay silent, not after everything I had seen and learned. But how can I do that? I asked. How can I convince people of the truth of what I saw here? Miguel smiled, a smile that contained all the wisdom of the universe. But you don't need to convince anyone, Asher. Your task is simply to live the truth you know. Be an example of unconditional love, of boundless compassion. Speak about your experiences with those who are ready to listen. Plant the seeds of awareness and let them grow in their own time. He paused, his eyes piercing deep into my soul. Remember, Asher, you are not alone in this mission. We, the beings of light, will always be with you, guiding and protecting those who choose the path of love and truth. With those words, I felt a wave of energy envelop me. It was as if I was being filled with light, strengthened for the task ahead. The future of humanity is at a turning point, concluded Miguel. The choices you make in the coming years will determine the course not only of Earth, but of countless souls on their journey of evolution. Go now, Asher. Return to the physical world and share the light you carry within. And with that... I felt myself being pulled back, preparing to return to the physical world. Miguel's last words echoed in my consciousness, filled with urgency and hope. The process of returning to my physical body was an experience that defies description in earthly terms. It was as if I was being pulled through layers of reality, each one denser and more limited than the last. At first, I resisted. The peace and expansion I had experienced in the spiritual realms was so profound, so complete, that the idea of returning to the limitations of the physical body seemed almost unbearable. But then I remembered the mission I had been given, the importance of what I had to do, and that gave me the strength to continue. As I approached the physical plane, I began to feel sensations that I had forgotten. Weight, density the limitation of being confined to a single point in space and time. It was like trying to squeeze myself back into clothes that had become too small. Slowly, painfully, I began to reconnect with my body. First, it was just a vague awareness of its existence. Then, I started to feel it. The pain that had been my constant companion in the last few months of cancer was back, although somehow it seemed distant less important than before. I heard voices around me, muffled at first, as if they were coming from far away. I recognized the voice of Eleanor, my wife, whispering words of love and encouragement. I heard the voice of Dr. Becker, my doctor, giving urgent orders to the team. Slowly, with an effort that seemed to consume all my energy, I opened my eyes. The light of the hospital room seemed blinding to me after the soft glow of the spiritual realms. I blinked several times, trying to focus. Eleanor's face was the first thing I saw clearly. He was stained with tears, his eyes red from crying. But when she realized I was awake, her face lit up with a joy that reminded me of the light I had experienced on the other side. Asher! she exclaimed 
her voice shaking with emotion. Oh, Asher, you came back to me. I tried to speak, but my throat felt dry and scratchy. I only managed a weak moan. Immediately, Eleanor grabbed a glass of water with a straw and brought it to my lips. The cold liquid was a shock to my system, yet another reminder of the physical sensations I would have to readapt to. Dr. Becker appeared at my bedside, his face a mixture of astonishment and disbelief. Mr. Wyndham, he said, checking the monitors next to me. That's, that's extraordinary. We declared you clinically dead a long time ago. Well, that doesn't matter now. How are you feeling? I swallowed hard and finally managed to mutter, I'm here. It was a simple answer, but full of meaning. I was back, yes. But I was no longer the same man who had entered that hospital. He had died and been reborn, not just in the physical sense, Miko, but in the deepest and most spiritual sense possible. In the days that followed, I was subjected to a battery of exams and tests. The doctors were perplexed by my recovery. The cancer that had spread throughout my body seemed to have regressed significantly. It had not completely disappeared, but it was at a much less advanced stage than before. It's a miracle, Dr. Becker declared in a candid moment. There is no other medical explanation for this. I knew it was more than a miracle. It was a purpose, a mission. As I recovered physically, I began to plan how I would accomplish the task given to me. I knew it wouldn't be easy. How could I translate the transcendental experiences I had into words that people could understand? How could I convey the urgency of Miguel's message without sounding like a lunatic? But every time I looked into Eleanor's eyes, every time I saw the joy and love on her face, I was reminded of the power of love and human connection. That was why I had come back. To be a channel of that love. To help awaken people to the greater truth of who they really are. As my physical strength returned, I felt new energy flowing through me. It wasn't just the joy of being alive, although that was certainly part of it. It was a feeling of purpose, of being connected to something bigger than myself. I knew the path ahead of me would not be easy. There would be challenges, doubts, moments of despair. But I also knew I wasn't alone. The memory of the unconditional love I experienced on the other side strengthened me, gave me courage to face whatever came my way. As I prepared to leave the hospital and return to the world, I felt a mixture of apprehension and anticipation. The future Miguel had shown me was bleak, yes, but also full of possibilities, and I had a role to play in shaping that future. With Eleanor by my side, I took my first steps out of the hospital and into the sunlight. The world seemed different now, more alive, more vibrant. Or maybe it was me who was different. Either way, I was ready to begin my new journey to be the light that Miguel asked me to be. The future was waiting, and I had a story to tell. In the months following my near-death experience, I went through a deep process of reflection and adaptation, returning to normal life after having experienced the spiritual realms was, to say the least, challenging. Every aspect of my everyday existence seemed to have taken on a new dimension. The colors seemed more vibrant, the sounds richer, even the air I breathed seemed charged with an energy I had never noticed before. It was as if I had gained a new pair of eyes, capable of seeing beyond the surface of things. But with this new perception also came new challenges. How could I continue my life as before, knowing what I now knew? How could I fulfill my worldly responsibilities when I felt the weight of a cosmic mission on my shoulders? Eleanor, my beloved wife, was my pillar of support during this time of transition. His constant presence, his unconditional love, reminded me daily of the power of human love, an echo of the divine love I had experienced on the other side. Although she could not fully understand what I had been through, her openness to listen and her willingness to support me were fundamental to my readaptation to life on Earth. Slowly, I started sharing my experience with a wider circle of people. I started with close friends and co-workers, those who I felt might be more open to listening without judgment. Reactions were varied. Some were skeptical, others fascinated. Some seemed frightened by the implications of what I was saying, while others found comfort and hope in my words. 
One of the first people I shared my experience with in detail was Dr. Becker, the doctor who had cared for me during my illness. He listened with a mixture of scientific fascination and professional skepticism. Mr. Wyndham, he said after I'd finished my account, from a medical point of view, I cannot explain what happened to you. Your recovery defies all odds. As for your experience, well, I am a man of science. I can neither confirm nor deny what you experienced. But I can say that something profound clearly happened to you, and the effects are undeniable. His words reminded me of the challenge I would face in trying to communicate my experience to a world that was largely unprepared to accept such realities. But they also reminded me that the transformation I had undergone was visible even to those who did not believe in the reality of my spiritual journey. As I felt stronger and more secure in my new reality, I began to look for ways to fulfill the mission entrusted to me. I returned to my job as a philosophy professor, but now my classes were infused with a new perspective. I couldn't talk openly about my near-death experience in an academic context, but I could guide my students to deeper questions about the nature of reality, consciousness, and the purpose of life. I also started giving talks in smaller groups, in contexts more open to spiritual discussions. It spoke about the interconnectedness of all things, about the illusion of separation, about the transformative power of unconditional love. I didn't explicitly mention my near-death experience, but I let the wisdom I had gained flow through my words. One of the most important lessons I learned was the importance of respecting each individual's path. Not everyone was ready to hear the message I had to share, and forcing it would only cause resistance. Instead, I learned to be a beacon, allowing those who were ready to find their way to me. At night, when the world was quiet, I would often sit in meditation, reconnecting with the energy I had experienced on the other side. In these moments of stillness, I felt the presence of beings of light, reminding me that I was never truly alone in my mission. Archangel Michael's words constantly echoed in my mind. The future of humanity is at a turning point. I saw evidence of this every day in the news, in the conflicts and crises that seemed to multiply around the world. But I also saw signs of hope. People coming together to help each other. Awareness movements gaining momentum a growing search for spiritual meaning and purpose. I knew the road ahead would be challenging. The bleak future Miguel had shown me was still a very real possibility. But I also knew that every act of love, every moment of compassion, every word of truth spoken with courage, had the power to change that future. My mission, I realized, was not to save the world alone. It was about being a piece in the great cosmic puzzle, doing my part to raise humanity's consciousness, one heart at a time. It was living the truth I knew, being an example of the unconditional love I had experienced, and helping others awaken to their own divine nature. As I fully embraced this mission, I felt a deep peace settle into my being. No matter what the future held, I knew I was on the right path, and with each step I took along that path, I felt more aligned with the greater purpose I had returned to. The future was still uncertain, but I was ready to face it, armed with the knowledge and love I had brought from the other side. I can't help but think about the visions Archangel Michael showed me. The dark future he predicted appears, in many ways, to be unfolding before our eyes. The environmental, social, and spiritual crises he mentioned are daily headlines in the news but I also see signs of the other possibility he mentioned, the future of light and spiritual evolution. I see it in the eyes of the young people who participate in my seminars, hungry for a deeper truth. I see it in the global movements for justice, compassion, and sustainability. I see it in the growing acceptance of practices like meditation and mindfulness, even in traditionally skeptical corporate and educational environments. My work has evolved over the years. What started as lectures and workshops has turned into a global movement. With the help of Eleanor and a dedicated team, we founded the Center for Expanded Consciousness, a place where people of all backgrounds can come to learn, grow, and awaken to their true nature. Through the Center, we have been able to reach millions of people around the world. We offer online programs, in-person retreats, 
and even a meditation app that helps people connect with their spiritual essence in the midst of their busy lives. Seeing the impact of this work has been deeply rewarding. I receive letters and emails daily from people whose lives have been transformed, people who found hope in moments of despair, who discovered purpose where before there was only emptiness. However, I know the work is far from over. The future that Miguel showed me is not yet decided. We are, as he said, at a turning point. The choices we make in the coming years, as individuals and as a species, will determine the course of our evolution. Sometimes, when I observe the state of the world, I feel overwhelmed by the magnitude of the challenge we face. But then I remember Miguel's words, Do not underestimate the power of a single soul dedicated to the light. Every act of love, every compassionate choice, Every moment of spiritual awakening creates ripples that spread throughout the universe. And although we may not see the immediate results of our actions, I trust that they are contributing to the great tapestry of cosmic evolution. As I approach the end of my earthly life, I feel a deep peace. I know I did the best I could to fulfill the mission entrusted to me. And I know the work will continue through those whose lives have been touched by this message. I don't know what awaits me on the other side when it's time to leave again. But I'm not afraid. My experience has taught me that death is not an end, but a transition, a return to our true spiritual home. For those reading this, I leave you with one last thought. You are more than you think you are. You are an eternal soul, a unique expression of the divine. No matter what challenges you face, no matter how dark the night may seem, there is a light within you that can never be extinguished. Always remember, you are not alone. We are all connected, all part of a great cosmic tapestry of love and consciousness. And every choice you make, every act of love and compassion, has the power to change not just your life, but the destiny of all humanity. The future is in our hands. May we choose wisely with love and compassion for the good of all beings,